Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to number 24 in our IC7300 from A to Z series. This time we're going to take a quick look at the USB audio settings on the radio. It's been a little while since I've been able to post something. I've been traveling for work quite a bit, and I'm actually on travel as I'm doing this video. So we're going to take a quick look at a segment I was able to record before I left this last time. So let's get to it. Well, there's a lot of RIDI activity going on on 40 meters, and all the bands actually, because the CQ Worldwide RIDI contest is going on this weekend. So let's finish taking a look at the USB settings for connecting the rig to your PC. We're going to take a look at the settings on the menu here. So you'll hit menu, then you hit set, and we want to go to connectors. And then right at the top of the list is the accessory slash USB selections, and there's a number of them here. We looked at these back in uh, video number nine, more with an eye toward the accessory side. They're pretty much the same for the USB side, so we're going to review them here. And then there's a couple additional ones that we're going to look at for your transmit audio. So the first one on the list is uh, accessory slash USB output select. I have it set to AF, which is audio frequency. IF is intermediate frequency. The only reason you would use this is if you were going to process the IF audio with a digital receiver. There are some digital broadcasts on HF um, where you can use the IF. It's a, it's a much wider signal, and you can uh, have your computer interpret the digital audio. I have not played with any of that, so I'm not too familiar with it, but that's what the IF output is for. Uh, audio output level, and that's pretty self-explanatory, and again, it's the same level whether it's accessory or the USB connection. So if I take this and turn it down, you hear the audio go away, and I can go all the way up to maximum and uh, the default is 50 which I find fine because you can also adjust this on your PC we'll look at that in a little bit here and if you do press and hold this one if you hit default it'll force it back to 50 regardless of what you had it set to squelch again on and open if you set this to on the squelch control will be effective on the outputs going to the uh, accessory jack or through the USB connection. If you set it to off, then turning the squelch all the way up has no effect. It just leaves the audio open regardless of what the squelch setting is. And again, I'm going to leave that on because I'd rather be able to use the squelch if I'm using that USB output maybe for recording or something other than digital modes. If you're going to use it only for digital modes, then you might want to leave this turned off so you'll always have audio coming into your digital program. Uh, this is the beep and speech output. And again, if you're going to be playing with buttons while you're using digital software, you might want to turn this off. This makes it so that button presses and the speech output that announces your frequency does not get fed through to the uh, USB and accessory jack. Again, I'm going to leave mine on for right now. Next one is the IF output level. That would be the level if you had the output set to IF instead of AF. And it, so they do give you a separate control for that. I'm not really going to play with that one. Then this is the one place where they do separate these, and this is the accessory modulation level and the USB modulation level. So if you're using the audio input from the USB port or from the accessory port, you do have two separate controls for setting those. And then we'll look at these separately in a minute when we go into transmit mode. And then... Uh, data off modulation. This determines where your modulation is going to come from if you have data mode off. And your, uh, sorry, your choices are uh, microphone only, accessory jack only, either mic or accessory jack, or the USB jack, 
or the mic and the USB. So you can get your audio from a variety of sources. I'm actually going to, it was set to mic and accessory. I'm going to set it to microphone only, so it will only come from the microphone jack on the front of the rig if you set it to that. That's with data off. And then if we go down one more, data modulation. If you have the rig in data mode, the modulation will come from, and then you have the same choices here, and I have my rig right now set to USB. So if I'm in data mode, the rig gets audio only from the USB audio connection into the radio. And again, this is one of the other few menu choices where the accessory jack and USB are treated separately. So this will have audio only coming in. If you're using data modes and uh, digital modes, you really do not want to use any of these that have mic, like mic and USB or mic and accessory or, of course, mic by itself. Because if you do that, whatever audio in the room is coming over the, you know, if you've got background noise and people talking, that's going to get fed into the transmit audio along with whatever your signal is coming from your um, from your computer. So again, I've got this set to USB so that it'll only come from there. Well, that's all I've got for this time. Next time, we're going to take a look at the rest of the USB settings that pertain to the serial data port. And then finally, we'll take a look at how you adjust all these settings with at least one example of digital mode software that runs on your PC. As always, thanks for watching. If you're enjoying this series, please consider subscribing by pressing the button that'll pop up on the lower right of your screen toward the end. And I always appreciate any likes. This is Tom, WA2IVD. Thanks for watching Ham Cured Smoke.